bit on the deep side, but all in all, that's not too bad. The biggest problem is being stuck to things, I think. Let me just see if that's ready to move. Is that no. so on? Yes. Yes, it's so on. Yeah. Well, we'll leave it to soak a bit longer. It's not too extensive, anyway. How's that forearm showing up? That's mainly so special, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's good. All right, we'd like to try moving those fingers again. We've got some involvement on the palm as well there, isn't it? So that's left palm. It's a mixture of deep dermal, isn't it? And uh, some superficial, but there's some... Yes, there's some new skin forming there. And the royal, the clue would... Is it any good? Let's put it this way, it's not much good to you today, but it will improve. Will I have to have a skin graft done to this hand? You'll need some skin graft done to that hand, yes. Look at the back of those fingers where it's deeper, that yellow. Yeah. And we've got that dead stuff away, we've got to resurface that for you. Yeah. On the front, it's starting to heal, but there's still some areas, I think, that might need some new skin put on. As long as you can sort my eyes and my hands out, I don't care what you do. Those are first on the list. My eyes and my hands. That's right. You've got your priorities right. Just show me again what you can manage with those. All right, and straighten. OK. Well, that's the one that's going to be the problem, isn't it? Because that's... Sorry, I'll bite. That one's a bit deeper, you see. That's why it's tucked in like that. And we'll probably have to do a little more to that one. Yeah. OK, let's just chart in the forearm and palm. That's the one that's going to cause some problem. Go back today. You're looking a lot better. You didn't see nothing. You cleared up your bum. I know. My face went too bad. They just took the stretcher off my back now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't be well. I'm going back to my bed, right? I'm tired, right? Yeah. I'll see you. I'll see you about anyway, right, Mac? Yeah, okay, right. Catch yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I think, first of all, I should say he's a very lucky man to be alive. This was a severe and an extensive injury. It's going to be a problem for you to get used to the idea that your son's uh, gone through a harrowing experience. That for a while, anyway, he'll not exactly regard the world to rose-coloured spectacles. He'll be quite fractious and a bit difficult to deal with. But so long as you understand that, that he's been through this terrible experience and it's upset him for a while, then I think we'll, we'll get along fine. That's covered now. Okay. I don't ever want another performance like that. No, you're right. You're stick <laughs> You've got so much cream on you, probably slide off. <clears throat> the most pressing problem, I'm quite certain, is the hands. At the moment, anyway, I feel I should be quite guarded in what I think will be the final outcome for the function of the hands. But, and this will take a lot of physiotherapy and a lot of cooperation on his part to get a good result. All the skin grafts do I have to do is take? Yes, it'll be a while, my son. It's not going to come overnight, you know, that would you? You may have to... A couple of weeks. To get the skin grafts. I suppose it was harder for my mother to come in and see me, because she's a district nurse, and she knew what the injuries meant. I reckon I'd be home for my 21st birthday. Oh, I don't know about that. You've got five weeks to go for that, so I don't know. You've got a lot of guts and determination, but whether you'll be home in five weeks, I don't uh, know. Yeah. Well, the thing is, does it matter whether you're home for your 21st? We can bring you 21st up here to you, can't we? Ah, well, it's not a shame. We can't yeah. bring it. Can you bring the social club up yet? No, I can't bring the social up. I quite agree, but I can bring all the strong bow they let you drink. Yeah, well, I'll put I can bring you friends. Carl and Saunders so, will come. Social club is still... 
still the place you want to be. Yeah. Got to start off the binge. Yes, I know. Start off the crawl on the 21st. Well, we wait and see about that. We have to wait. I should be on sick leave then, anyway. But they're, as they said when you came in, they can do this at their leisure now. They've got you in the right place. You don't want it all done at once, Simon. It's got to be a nice, slow, progressive Well, they're going to do my job. hands and my eyes. On Monday, yes, you told me that. All in one operation. But, yeah, on Monday. Which is uh, something I'm rather pleased about. It's something to look forward to, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'll get it all out the mm. way then, and then I'll start recovering on my own mm. then. A couple of weeks, simply. Yeah. Mm. Can you shift this pillow up a bit on the back of my neck, Mom? How's that? That is better. All right, is it all right? No, yeah, it's off my neck. All right, then. Do you feel like talking about it? I don't mind, don't mind talking about it at all. Because it was, it was quite, it's quite good, really, because the way people reacted to everything. I was running around a bit, like a chicken with his head cut off, sort of thing. And I'm a, a Royal Marine. He just sort of took charge of the situation and just told me to get out. He couldn't... He couldn't see or breathe for smoke. Big, thick, black clouds of smoke. You got flaming shrapnel shooting about. Turmoil and carnage up there. I don't think many lads got burnt alive. I think most of them got killed by bomb shrap, not personally. Oh, perhaps that's just what I'd like to think. I know for a fact there was three blokes in front of me running around in flames. That's why I'm still alive, I think, is because they took it all off me. So if there'd have been nobody in front of me, I wouldn't, have, <laughs> I wouldn't be here at all. It must have been the same for the people on board the Royal Navy ships. Even for the men on the General Belgrano. They must have felt some terrible pain and fear and everything and panic. I was in pain, but it was... I was sort of very excited, I suppose. Yes. Or, or in shock, or what, I don't know. Mm. I remember, I remember screaming, and then they give me some sort of jag and to calm me down. And then they, uh, they took me off to another room where they cut my rings off, my fingers. And then they left me in there with a load of other blokes. And I couldn't swallow water, I was just being sick everywhere. And then the next thing I know, I, I was waking up, they put me in general anaesthetic. I was on some helicopter going to Uganda. What do you think of the Uganda? You can't, you can't give them enough praise of people on there. I had some skin grafts done to my eyes there because the eyelids shrunk very quickly due to the heat. It looked after you very well since you come in here, didn't it? Yeah, well, he freed me off that stretcher pretty well. Yes. Screaming out dabs. I think you're entitled to that, Simon, aren't you? Oh, I don't know. You know, don't you, after you've had the skin graft on Monday, that you were not allowed out of bed for five days? It's going to be awkward to be lying down five days. I know that, but... They probably, is... they probably have me sitting up. Well, they, you mustn't get out of bed for five days. This is what they said, so you don't go up the corridor to see anybody. Now, listen to them. Right? He's a good lad. Yeah, I'll do myself. Will you remove all the pests from the eyelids? I shall remove as much as I can easily remove. Yes. So that the eyes won't pest over and get any more. I hope they won't be as mucky as they are at the moment, or so, that's true. Because um, at the moment, I got a. I'm petrified of all the Oh, you know. Yeah. 
I'm totally afraid of what we've played. Well, I think that's a very reasonable fear, but I don't think that there's any real danger of it. We won't go blind if we've got the eyelids working properly. And that's why we're doing this operation this morning, to make them work better. Yeah. OK? OK. Right. Can we let the lads get on with it? Pop you off to sleep, eh? Hey? Yeah. Good boy. See you later. So the object here will be to go for a thin split skin graft in a fairly continuous sheet. Cut. How's that for thickness? Nice and thin, good. This will go on the hands. I'm deliberately cutting this one fairly thin so we can get a nice compliant surface. Much easier to fit round fingers if it's thin, and it's also the thinner the skin graft, the more likely it is to get a high percentage take. Well, that's the surface we've got by removing dead tissue and getting down to live tissue with its own blood supply. We should expect that tissue to put up new capillary vessels into this graft fairly quickly. And because we've cut this graft thinly, we can fit it into these awkward shapes Rather complex jigsaw. Just straight that across there. This graft's going to live on the, shall we say, the tissue juices for the next 36 hours while that process is going on. And providing we keep this graft still and in close contact with that surface, there's a good chance that new vessels will grow in, the graft will take. And these stitches I'm putting in are really to stop the graft skidding about when I get dressing on. Do it. Right. Substantial. There. I'm moulding the wet wool into this hand to get the fingers fairly well extended at the knuckle joints. There's always a tendency for the fingers to claw. As the wool dries out, it will set into a fairly good splint. The position of these when in repose is quite important. As a wrong position can take a long time to, uh, to correct afterwards. It is quite a regular practice in the management of major burns to do this process of resurfacing by stages, doing as much each time as is safe in the interest of the patient's general health. This chap, he's still quite plump, but there's, he, his family describe him as a good eater because he's obviously a great trencherman, normally. And uh, we're seeing him slightly fined down, but he will lose more weight before we're finished. OK. Will you move one light up onto the face, please? Now, this patient has already had one emergency skin graft on the Uganda on his way up here, and that has done a lot towards preserving the uh, eyes. I'm marking out the line I'm going to cut to create a space into which I can feed more skin. The problem here being that this lid is now short of skin in this direction. Sister dear, will you get that fine plastic set organised? You can see I'm doing eyelids now. Get it organised. The blink reflex is a remarkable thing, and it usually can outpace any foreign body flying towards the eye or any flesh. And so it is very rare that the front surface of the eyes directly burns. The blink reflex has closed the lids firmly. The trouble is that in having taken the brunt of the thermal injury, they themselves may scar up, contract, and cause secondary exposure of the cornea. This is the thing we're out to prevent, because exposure of the cornea sooner or later will lead to ulceration and to perforation of the eye itself. And that is the mechanism by which eyes can be lost. I chose a relatively hairless part of the shoulder to take this graft, so I would hope not to see much growth of hair on this lower eyelid. Saline. So, 
that's where the lower lid should be in repose, helping to protect the cornea. I'm just going to cut roughly a shape in this polyurethane, which will fit over the graft and over which I can tie the silks and give a little even pressure. We'll just see if that's going to fit in there. We pull that up, push that in. Very much a matter of pushing the graft into the space created. And then when the strings are tied over it, it will immobilize the graft and eliminate the dead space. Marvellous news of the Cooner, haven't you? Yeah. Hey, your hands are coming on lovely. You give you right up to ten. Isn't that marvellous? He's promised you second team football more or less this season. Yes. I don't think I'll bother. No, I shouldn't. You don't feel like bothering at the moment, do you? No, I don't think he's doing too well by the end of the season. No, I think he's a lot more to be fit. Really? Look at my legs, they look chicken as well. Oh, God. But they're a lot better, Simon, to what they were, aren't they? Look at the weight they've lost off them. It won't take you long to get the weight back on. My <laughs> Jesus, you've got to take so long time to pull the muscle mm -hmm. back on legs. Get the physiotherapist out of you soon. I think of all the cards you have, Simon. Too bad. Great, aren't they? I don't know, I don't know some of them are. Huh? I think no. this the village, Simon. Watch them all the tradespeople. Mr. Jones, the butcher. You've got loads of notes there. Marvellous. I'm quite pleased with the face at the moment. There's been a lot of spontaneous healing here. Those eyelids are all right for the moment. They're still a little pulling down, as you can see, but I'm not in any hurry to do any more there. And that bit I grafted on the edge of the nose there is filled in quite nicely. As you can see, staff, he's healed quite a lot spontaneously on there, so we've managed to avoid grafting. Still a bit discoloured, but I don't think we need to worry about that at this stage. And I think the general principle here is that we want to get him up and doing and walking about for a phase. He's been lying about for a long time and he's got very unfit for a rugby player, haven't you? So I thought that the gymnasium was the place. General mobility, yeah. general fitness. as hard as you can. That's it. That's pulling at the front, is it? Yeah. OK, relax. All right, spread your fingers again. It's Come on, spread them. The blue, Look, yeah. You can see in between there. Spread them out. That's it. Go on. Go on. Keep going. Nearly there, look. I didn't touch it. No, I know you must go with I can read minds when it comes to pain. A lot of effort there, Paul. Mm. Go on, go on, go on. It's good. You can see the knuckles now, look. Maybe pick up a pint soon. That's what I'm aiming for. Pick up a pint and all the fag. I know. And as soon as my fingernails get strong enough, I'm going to pick my nose. No, they're good, the physios here. Quite good to people here as well. Nursing staff are quite good. How do you think about your other hand? I don't think that one's going to come. No, I don't. 
I believe his sound is going to come as well. The Colonel assures me that it will. That's cool, it's not his hand, is it? It's just all good now. Mm. When you're so trying you to bet sleep. You bend at those best more than what you thought you would. Oh, I... You've come in leaps and bounds in three weeks, Simon, haven't you? Oh, See if... come on, like, you know, it's... It would be dull to say I, I, I just stay in the same place. But people can see improvements in me, whereas I can't see improvements in myself because it is me. Because you, you wake up and the pain is there and you don't realise it's less than it was the day before or the week before because it's still constant. It, it doesn't change in any way. You don't, you don't actually realise anything is happening to you until something something big does happen to you. No, you don't notice it, but uh, we go away for a couple of days and come back and we can see the difference, an immense difference, in two or three days. Oh, yeah, I can imagine you could. I can imagine you would see a great difference in me. Are we not suffering your pain? Oh, I... Oh. What's that? Oh. Where else? Which one, Simon? The... Oh, that one. I got my dressings done once a day. Anything up to three, three and a half hours. How the nurse is put up with me, I'll never know. And I think it took some skin off it yesterday. <laughs> and that's what it was. Mm. What, just in the knee? Yeah, just in, at the back of the arm. Uh -huh. Man, is it so. Mm. Well, he would have taken by losses to stop me going home. Wales is my country. It's a marvellous place to come from. These people are always smiling. No matter how much depression is down there, they're always smiling. There's a lot more in Nelson for me than there is anywhere else in the world. You know, it's where we've done everything where we've jacked up silly little plans to go somewhere and do something stupid. It's our stomping ground. You can never really leave Wales. You might leave it in body, but never in soul. I was popping to my grandmother's on the way home. Give her a bit of hassle. She doesn't feel right if we don't argue. Saturday night, man. Oh, look, she got tailor maids and all. Hey, what's going down in the world? <laughs> you are. I can. I can hold myself now. Yes, yeah. Can't use your hands like John, but uh, they come Never along like you. Come along, mind, you? I can bend them a bit. Like Take a bit of time, man. You know that, don't you? Ah, good time. You know about time? I'm almost fit enough to play rugby, but I bet I played before the end of the season. Well, uh, they, uh, they're always not back in camp. Bet I do. I won't play I won't play no cup matches or anything, but I'll be playing rugby. Okay. And that's a suit, that. Dude, I'm getting rid of the scabs from the burns, and I'm getting scabs from blisters now. 
Do you need scabs? Yeah, I have scabs on scabs now. I kicked the last of the boon scabs off this leg. Kicking them off. Another drop of tea now. Ah. Okay. Yeah, it's great to be old, man. <laughs> yeah, all the bicycles, all the bicycles, three parrot are nuts, man. They all whiz around on the wheelchairs, like, you know? <laughs> and I come to the decision, the parrots are crazy. Uh -huh. There was this lad right from Warren Point, and he came in, and i never seen a guy so cheerful, like, he'd lost his leg, uh -huh. and, uh, he came in like, and he'd been told that he might have to lose his foot. So you're still laughing, like, yeah. So the doctor came up to him the following day and said, "Look, you uh, you're gonna lose your foot between three and five years from now. You're gonna have to have it off." He turned out the doctor. He, he, he must have stunned the doctor. He said, "I'll have it off tomorrow if you want me to." So he did. They took it off the following day. Oh, yeah. Didn't care. Just turned around and laughed. He said, "Well, it's got to be done. It's done." He said, "Make a best of a bad job." Glad to be alive. I tell you what. You know what I mean. What he does, right? He goes around the swimming pool, frightening all the kids. He lies flat on his back like that, and he's got his stump, and he's got a little bit at the bottom there, and he can bend it, see? And he goes around like a snorkel around the swimming pool like that, <laughs> scaring all the little kids, like. Uh. Crazy, man. Guys, should we wind our way up the house, then? Aye, we go up and have some chips. Another well, we want some warm cooked one chips, because they taste better than frozen ones. Oh, yeah, yeah, come on, then. Done. One, two, three. Oh, all right, sir. Yeah, I'll get up now. Yes. Leave me alone. I, no, don't move nothing for me. All right. I'm all right. I can do it myself. Get a bit of sauce on it. I didn't bring any salt. Do you want salt? No, no salt. Not over the chips, just on a side. You can dunk the chips in it. <laughs> Rebecca, the apple in my eye, that kid. Belongs to me. She might be my sister's child, but she's mine. Fall down and body. Yeah, body. What was that? What was she say? I was frightened she might be a bit scared of me. Yeah. But it turns out kids are just as daft as ever. They don't notice anything, do they? I couldn't really go down the social club. Kept telling myself I would, but I wasn't strong enough. Because they're not the sanest bunch of boys in the world. But about the best. We know him like, well, as a big lump of a boy, like, and uh, happy, like him. But then to see him, you know, like that, it's just not like him, is it, you know, to see him. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't say nothing much, you know, like, I felt like filling up and crying, like, you know, like, I mean, on him since, like, he was a small boy, like, you know, it's nice to see him home and a bit safe, like, you know. Uh, when we was on the Galad, just before it happened, we would always spend, say, ten minutes with each other talking about back home, and, and he was always on about me being a lucky bugger, like, uh, but, uh, right. and he, he, well, he was right in the end of it, but uh, he was always joking, and, and uh, he was a character in himself with all the boys. And, well, no, but as a person, he knew his job in the army and he knew it well. But uh, I think he, he lived because of his size, because he was a big boy. Yeah, he was. Right? Yeah, and anybody else there would add it. I think he's the only one that came out from that end of the ship on top deck. Yeah. And now we got to the top deck. Yeah, I never know. He must have run upstairs and the pain he was in. But, uh. Well, same, 
I tell you, he was up the hospital when we went to see him. And one of the boys, his closest friend, Carl Dix, he's uh, gone to Spain on holidays yeah. today. Like, I was his really close friend, Carl. I went to see him and he said, look, Dixie, he said, if you wondered how I survived this, he said, before I went, I give all my cassettes, he said. And I couldn't bear the thought of you playing them all, he said, and that's why I survived all this. <laughs> he's <laughs> a character in himself, you Because he's, he's just a fantastic guy, like. And he loves he's his rugby, and uh, he'll be back on at the end of the season. Oh, he can't wait to get, he can't wait to get the shirt on, you know. He can't. That's Simon, isn't it? Yeah, this is it. I knew it had happened to him, knowing that they had to take the mortars round by ship. And when Michael Nicholson said at 20 to 6 that night that it had been hit, such graphic descriptions, I just knew that it had happened to him. Just knew it, because he was in support company. The only place he could be was on the Galahad. And three hours I just spent in the garden, just tidying it up, I couldn't believe. Then the 9 o'clock news came and I saw it. And I went upstairs ready for the 10 o'clock news and at four minutes past 10, the Ministry of Defence rang and told me that he was injured, not seriously. And then two anxious days until the Ministry of Defence phoned me at seven o'clock in the night and told me that it was 4% burns, hands and face not serious. Then within two hours, Captain Evans is knocking the door to tell me that they'd made a mistake in the percentage, that it was 46%. Mm. That was very harrowing. I think the 24 days leading up to him coming back were the most desperate days of my life. They say with the modern day technology, satellite system and that, that you got communication, but no communication for us at all. We fought for every bit of information that we had. And it came to a point at one time that I felt, well, tell me, is he alive or dead? Because they had told us 4%. 46%, then seriously ill. They were lifting us up and putting us down. That we couldn't come to terms with it at all. And I thought, well, if he's dead, we'll come to terms with our grief. But not the way they were doing things to us. Uh, I feel the communications were very, very bad. I saw him go, and I said I'd see him come back. And I'll always remember the RAF fellas there. They opened the doors, and he, they went to him. And they said, welcome home, lad. We look after you now. And those were the first words, really, that Simon had heard. I didn't know it was Simon then. And they brought him out, my mother and father with me, my husband. And I said, oh, look at that poor boy. And I turned away. And he said, Mam, I just lost, I couldn't breathe. And they could see my reaction, and they took him from me. And then I followed him in when I composed myself. And I was crying, and he said, don't cry, Mammy. I'm all right, I'm alive. You've got to try and straighten the knee out fully. Okay. Right. It's this scar on the back and this leg here. I'm trying to stretch that. Right, and again, straighten out. Wow, kick. Come on, all the way out. Go on, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. A little bit more, it's nearly there. So now toes up, that's it. So you're stretching this bit back there where that scar is. Come on. A little bit more. And let down. 
and straighten out again. Go on. Go on. Push right out. Go on. Go on. Keep going. Keep going. Come on, you're nearly there. Back down a bit more slowly. Who's good for me going home? Is uh it's made me think and realise is an end to all this. All the time I was in hospital, my girlfriend Susan Draper, she came to see me very regularly. Twice, three times a week if she could make it. She was like a rock to me. I'm gonna get out eventually. There is an end. It, it isn't all bad. <laughs> But a physio is starting to work on his hand in ways he couldn't before. Couldn't touch these fingers at all. The overall physical appearance in the end, for me, would be quite pleasing in the end. I know that I just, I can see it, and then I get my little times when I don't believe it. Doubting Thomas. Mm. But uh, in the end, I'll have full working hands. This is from the Colonel, this. I love full working hands. And I should have very little mark into the face. And as far as the hair on the back of the head's concerned, I don't got a clue. But that's about the least of my worries at the moment. I think the skin is about the most important, but in the end, I should come sort of right. I should resemble something like I used to look anyway. Of course, you really resemble what you look like now. I mean. You've still got all your features, nothing got knocked off or anything. You've just got your nose, your mouth, your chin. Yeah, just about. <laughs> it's the same. Doesn't matter. A little bit thinner. A little bit thinner, I. I'm just under 12 stone now. Should be quite a long life lane. Yeah, it should be. Be forming my own this time, and I'll know what type of life lane you want to. <laughs> Can't wait to get him out. Get him fit and well, and then he can, we can get married. That's, that's it. And he won't do it until he is fit and well, until he can write, sign his name on the marriage certificate. I've said to him when he's had his, um, you know, when he's not been feeling too good, you're lucky, Simon. You came back, and that's all that matters to me. You came back, you came home. It doesn't matter to me what he looked like. Never did before, did it? <laughs> I was never any film star before, so. <laughs> It doesn't really make any difference, does it? It doesn't change the person I am inside, so I think that means... That's I think it. that's he's the main thing. He's Simon underneath, you know? Underneath whatever else the burns and scarring does, it doesn't change the person I am inside, so... I think that's all I got to look forward to, really, is just getting myself working again and being me, mm. regardless of what I look like. It'll just be me. It's not going to really make a great deal of difference being burnt or not. I won't be able to work like I used to for the, for the time being. It's not that I did a great deal before, but uh, I'll not be able to work like the rest of the lads for a while because the hands will still be slightly tender with a mortar kit, but that'll come with time. It's quite a lot I can do now that I couldn't do when he last came to see me at Woolwich. It's a long old job and you know you're you, so you've got to get stuck into it. And it's not going to happen on its own. You've got to sort of do something for yourself. Right, Simon, we're just going to start moving your cheeks around, OK? I want you to puff your cheeks out as hard as you can, like this. And suck them in. I want to see dimples appearing at the sides as well. Come on, really hard. Let's see you working. Good? OK. Right, you've got your breath back. <laughs> My face is going to spit now. Good. That shows it's moving about. <laughs> now, I want you to go E. Mm -hmm. 
They're there to release the skin and get the muscles working again in the face, which were sort of shocked by the fire. The eyes cannot be done by just pure stretching. It's got to be done by surgery. It's got to replace skin, which got taken away with the fire. Right, now we'll just generally move your mouth around in a circle, OK? And the nose is the same. But that's also had a skin graft on it, so it's um, contracted a lot. And that's why he's pulled up. Otherwise, he wouldn't have pulled up and turned inside out and done all sorts of silly things. The whole face round in a circle. Good. And just open that mouth once more as wide as you can. I'm going to unscrew my lips now. <laughs> right, Simon, we're just going to move the skin around your eyes to try and stretch it. All right? I'm going to push down, and I want you to look surprised. Push them up. Keep them there. Keep them there. Now frown. 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 Good. I'm There's a difference between looking normal and being ugly. You know what I mean? Uh, you can dream and you can wish. You know, and at the moment, uh, the face tells its own story. Good. Now we'll move round to the sides of your eyes. Stretching. Just a bit, yeah. OK. What about that? A bit better? Yeah. yeah. Good. OK, right. Look happy. Because that's how you must be feeling, isn't it? Yeah? Always, always. Always. Oh, yeah. OK, fine. Right, that's all for today. And I'll see you when? When are you going to turn up again? Try tomorrow. You'll try tomorrow, will you? OK, fine. Are right here, then. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Here, please. Not me. Not me. Is it? Quite a lot I can do now that I couldn't do. I can strike a match, I can light a lighter. I can hold a cup, I can hold a pint pot. So I can have my beer and... Uh, it's just uh, little things that everybody takes for granted I can do now. Let's just start by stretching your finger whips on the left hand. Okay. All right. You're a sadist. <laughs> so for your good. So you keep telling me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where can you feel that? Right across the back and then up there. What, right where it is going one? Yeah, all the way. Yeah. Good. All right, just leave it there now. Can you do that? Split yeah. apart? Come on, split apart. Oh, split what? it. A bit tight. Yeah, you're not wrong. Right. Stiff. OK. Let's just take your thumb oh. over. OK. All right, can you just take your thumb over to each one of your fingers in turn? Starting with the first one. That's it. Now, try and bring your thumb further round when you come to that third one. That's it, right round. Come on. Good. It's got to be worth it in the end, isn't it? And uh, I might just about manage 75% out of both hands. And then back to the first. Is it, is it better than it was? Yeah. Do you feel as if your thumb's going further? Yeah. It's more painful than it It's more painful than it was? Yeah, just because you put more stretch. Yeah. Okay. Let's have your right hand. What I don't have, I'll have to compensate for. Because at the moment, I've got to use two hands to do most things. Right, let's just see what you're doing at your knuckles. Try and straighten them out for me. As far as you can go. Yeah, yeah. Good. And pull down. Good. OK. I still want to do what I originally said, like stay in the army and play rugby. But uh, the rugby I'll definitely try for. And I'll try and stay in the army, definitely. But. Because I'll have to go before a medical board to sort of assess whether my hands are good enough to stay in the army and whether I can continue, sort of, perhaps they might offer me a desk job or something or continue being a soldier, which I want to do. I don't want to sort of be a desk soldier, really. I'd rather go back to doing what I was doing before. They've told me that there's very little chance that I'll be able to do my job I used to do in the army. So, you know, um, take it as it comes. It can't be no, can't be no worse. I can't get no worse, can I? I can only improve. The cold is sort of slowing things down quite a lot now, and the skin is getting very tight. I think he's been a little bit more up and down since he's been at Chessington. I think he's had a lot of. Um, 
things that have, he thought would go right and have gone wrong. So he's taken a few knocks since he's been at Chesington, but I think now he's strong enough to do, take the knocks now, and he's got to bear those sort of things. You gotta say you feel sorry for yourself. It'll always be there, you know what I mean? It'll never leave my mind. And flame still scares me now. But uh, you can't really say a great deal about the way you were injured, because it's all part of war, really. Whether it was or wasn't a mistake or what, it's happened. Seeing a battalion is one of the best parts of the recovery. Seeing all the lads again, it's great. Just sad I couldn't have been out there. Just an ordinary guy who tried to do his job and got injured. That's all. He made me out to be a freak, as far as I'm concerned. Because it came out with some title like, Can the Surgeons Give Back This Man His Face? I mean, I had a face anyway. I've got a face now. <laughs> I don't look like Ryan O'Neill, but there again, who wants to? I'm, I'm quite happy being me. I am not a hero. I'm a bit nervous about it. When you're always in the hospital atmosphere, you're used to it, it doesn't bother you. But when you all of a sudden have to sort of come back to it, when I mean, you've got to come back to it, it's, um, you know, it's a bit unnerving, really. They're going to immobilise my right hand for two weeks, I think it is. They're going to put plaster on it for two weeks with their dressing and what have you to sort of make it into a shape hand and make it more useful for me. They're going to pin three fingers. They're going to slice down here because the webs have grown over large through skin grafting. And then they're going to pin that finger, that finger, and this finger, 
I'm going to pin the tip straight so it doesn't get in the way. And the fingers are of no use bent like that. They're more use sort of in a curve. I think we have an advantage over our predecessors in World War II that modern technology and anaesthetic methods enable us to do far more at one sitting than was considered prudent in the past. That's not to say that I think we want to waste any time when a patient is under an anaesthetic, but I think the ability to get more done at one session means in the long run fewer operative sessions. Our predecessors who pioneered this work in the 1940s took up to 50 operations to achieve their objective. So I like to think that with our longer, more aggressive techniques today, we're not going to get anywhere near that number. That is a digital nerve. Now, you see, when I say that things are close together, I just know from the appearance that that is a digital nerve. You want to stay, I've got to stay superficial to that plane of dissection. And say, well, so what? How important is a digital nerve? It tells you the difference between a 10p piece and a 2p piece, doesn't it? So we say that allowing for a few adjustments, we've opened out the palm of this hand in this direction and also in the width. And it is that defect which has got to be resurfaced with a thick split skin graft. The reason for taking a particularly thick split skin graft now is that this will hopefully be more resistant to the processes of contracture which always bedevil the use of a thin split skin graft. Feed it in. Goodness knows it wants to contract away anyway, so... As you can see now, we've filled in this rather awkward shape with a patchwork of skin grafts. And the problem now is to make sure that these grafts are firmly applied to the underlying surface. Because if they're not, then blood clot will lift the graft off and cause failure. And with a thicker graft, it's even more important than with the thin split skin graft. So the effect is rather like my glove, that if I allow this to ride free, there is a dead space beneath between my hand and the glove in which blood and serum can collect. When we've filled this space in with soft dressings, we should be trying to maintain the new position which we have achieved this afternoon by a plaster cast to maintain this opened posture. But Simon and we have still got quite a long way to go. Sue's been coming to see me fairly regularly, two, three times a week. Ever since I came back, the injuries have never really bothered her. Sorry, my skin. Can't come. <laughs> You're doing that on purpose, isn't it? Yep. She's still been like a rock to me. Happened till about a fortnight ago when we decided to split. And uh, it was basically my decision to split because I wanted to go and start in Wales after my injuries have been seen to. There's no arguments or any sort of displeasure being caused by the injuries. She's been very good. When I went home for weekends with her, she used to do my dressing, so it's never bothered her. The reason that I want to live in Wales is because I couldn't really just all of a sudden start a life in England. When I go back home, I'll be able to start my life because I'm in a community where everybody knows me and I won't have to go out and make friends again. I'll already have my, my friends that were there before, so I'm not basically having to fight to make friends and start a new life up in England. And for a long time, I'm going to be dependent on others. So if I'm dependent on others for too long, like if I was dependent on Sue, I would definitely be infringing on her lifestyle. She wouldn't have, she wouldn't be able to lead any sort of life of her own. Go for it, turkey. 
So she's better off being apart from me now. I suppose it's a sacrifice for both of us. But then again, nobody planned for the injuries. Hello, Simon. Nice. How are you feeling? Thanks, we're fine. All right. Doing all we expect of him, is he? No problems at all, sir. No. no. I just thought that we'd better refresh our memory before we discuss what we're going to do next with you. And if you recall, the, the really big problem, I think, was getting these, these hands fixed. Sure. And if you remember, taking that skin and putting that in there, we rather hoped to get that out really straight. Yes, sir. But it seems to me that it's slipped back a bit and it's tightened up. Sir. So that, in a way, we've lost some of the ground that we gained and I think we're going to have to repeat it. The reason, I think, is that you've got skin which is of the contracting kind. It's rather the way you're made, but uh, no matter. We've shown with other parts of you that we've got uh, some measure of success. I think we've been much more successful with this one, don't you? Because that's come out quite nicely. And I think that uh, once we got rid of those spikes, that's going to be quite promising. Will you just show me? Start getting those knuckle joints moving. That's right. Get that thumb. That's better. As you realise, what we're aiming for, Simon, is a thumb working against four fingers. Then you've got something you can work with. Sure. Fine. All right. Right, can you relax with that for the moment? We've got to talk about the other work now, and that's your face. I think that uh, those upper eyelids have done quite well. Would you close them down for me and then relax and open? We've got the eyelids right. Close them down. That's lovely. Open out again. All right. The main problem, I think, is the nose on your face. That skin over there is all pulled in and contracted up, and that's why it looks odd to you now. And it's tending to pull everything in. So, operation number 12 on Monday for you. And that's to resurface this area here. And I think we'll do the same. We'll take a thick split skin graft and take it, I think, probably somewhere somewhere on your side. There's a good, good area still left there. So that's what we'll do on Monday. And in the long term, I think we might well be doing little adjustments here and there for the next two years. Sure. All right. Well, I'll see you on Monday and we'll get on with that. Have you got any other questions? No, sir. That's fine. Thank you, sir. For me, the death of my mates was but the worst thing that happened to me. The death of so many of them. The injuries are just injuries, really, aren't they? But they know, you know what I mean? They're never going to come back, are they? They're gone forever. My life hasn't. I'm still having fun, still doing crazy things. But they're not going to come back. Then I'm going to be able to enjoy what I've enjoyed. And I'm still enjoying life, so... I think it was 46 altogether from my battalion and other regiments died on the Galahad. Lance Corporal Nicholas David Mark Thomas. Lance Corporal Christopher Francis Ward. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember this.